Rosalia is probably not a Pokemon that you would expect to do much of anything in competitive play, especially in OU, where some of the most powerful Pokemon like Tyranitar, Metagross, and Salamence rise to the top. Roserade is a very solid Pokemon, but back in Gen 3, Roserade didn't exist yet. Rosalia was just a single stage evolution, and not a particularly powerful one. But miraculously, in one of the highest level and most prestigious Gen 3 OU tournaments in the world, Rosalia was not only used on a professional team, but it won. How is that possible? Believe it or not, people were theory crafting the merits of Rosalia even before this. Even though this is an NU ranked Pokemon with a lot of shortcomings, mainly its terrible defensive stats, it does have some advantageous traits that are worth building around. The main appeal is its access to spikes, which is one of the best moves in the game. There are quite a few viable spikes users in Gen 3, but Rosalia stands out as the only grass type spikes user available in OU, at least since Cacturn was banned, which is a crazy story in its own right that deserves its own video. Grass is a pretty useful defensive type in Gen 3 that can really help to round out teams. Celebi is a very popular Pokemon because of how much it improves your matchup against electric and water types. Helping out against threats like Zapdos and Suicune and also being able to create spikes is fantastic roll compression. Rosilia has more to offer than just that though. This funny flower actually has a pretty excellent move pool. Leech Seed is yet another one of the best moves in the game and an incredibly safe way to make progress. Force enemies to switch and make your own switch insane thanks to the healing. Aromatherapy is yet another outstanding utility option that cures the status ailments of you and your entire team. Compressing aromatherapy onto your spikes user means that your teammates can afford to take status ailments that they otherwise couldn't, which can be game winning in some directions. In the final slot, many players choose Stun Spore, a paralysis inflicting move. This move only has 75 accuracy unlike Thunder Wave, which is unfortunate, but it's still a very high value status ailment and it has the benefit of working on ground types, unlike Thunder Wave. Other options include Hidden Power Grass, which hits decently hard off the back of your 100 base special attack, and can threaten enemies like Swampert and Melodic. Another option is Grass Whistle, a very inaccurate sleep inflicting move, but this is pretty rarely seen. It's quite inconsistent and Rosilia is a bit too frail to use it effectively. On top of all this, Rosilia has two excellent choices for abilities. Natural Cure, which will heal a Pokemon's status ailment every time they switch out, and Poison Point, which has a 30% chance to apply poison to enemies who make contact. That is a surprising amount of unique advantages. While it may seem like Rosalia would thrive on more defensive teams, players quickly realized the opposite. Because of Rosalia's frailty, it often doesn't stick around for very long. But Rosalia can work as a temporary check to electric or water types. It's usually able to come in once or twice and do a couple important things for you before it faints. And that is often enough. Depending on the matchup, you can choose to use Rosalia differently. Most of the time, you'll just want to create spikes as soon as possible. But if you're up against something like a Superman team or a solid defensive team with Claydol or Stami, maybe that one spike isn't as worthwhile. In those matchups, you could choose to use Rosalia for its aromatherapy. Bait an enemy to status you and counterattack them, then heal that status off later. Sometimes just a single stun spore can be game winning too against more aggressive teams that are all in on offense. You can cripple their important threat and stabilize from there. There are also some matchups where Rosalia can stick around for a long time. Against the most common melodic set, which only has Surf and Toxic to apply pressure, Rosalia completely hard walls it and can get enormous value by creating spikes and spreading Leech Seed. Rosilia is also quite effective against Suicune sets that only carry water moves. Leech Seed is more than enough to stop a Suicune from sweeping, and since more defensive Suicune sets are very passive, you can just stack spikes against them and get enormous value there too. The way Rosilia is used from game to game will vary. Sometimes it does barely anything, making one spike or doing one other useful thing per game, and sometimes it can totally carry specific matchups. This can make Rosilia a bit hard to use, but this is often how it goes with these roll compression Pokemon. Despite all these advantages, this is still Rosilia we're talking about. This thing has 45 base defense, and using this in an important tournament game would certainly be a bold and risky move. Some did try, but it didn't always work out. But in this tournament game for Kalos Invitational 6, between Pokemon Legends, Ban Manaphy, and Fear, Rosilia was about to make history. This team by Ban Manaphy actually features two offbeat choices, Rosilia and Arcanine, and they work quite well together. Arcanine is another weird one in Gen 3 OU. This is one of the most unique fire types in the game. It has great mixed attacking stats, two great abilities in Intimidate and Flash Fire, and it even has one of the most coveted offensive options in the game, Extreme Speed. Lenoon and Rayquaza are the only other two Pokemon with access to this move in Gen 3. Arcanine is nice here because it's one of the few fire types that can act as a pretty decent lead. Unlike the more popular Moltres and Charizard, Arcanine is not weak to Electra and can therefore stand its ground against Zapdos, which is one of the most common leads in Gen 3 OU. With HP fighting and that great attack stat, you can threaten Tyranitar 
avatar immediately too, another very common lead. Intimidate can improve your lead matchups overall, nerfing the physical damage of the common Tyranitar and Salamence, and even occasional fighting types like Hariyama. Arcanine also helps out Roselia quite a bit defensively. Arcanine can pivot in against the Ice and Fire types attacks that threaten Roselia, and apply offensive pressure from there. With extreme speed, you have a way to finish off low health enemies, and even do a bit of damage to Dugtrio on the way out. And Burn Immunity also helps out your Tyranitar. You can pivot in on Gengar's Will-O-Wisp and threaten them with a big overheat. What's also brilliant about this Arcanine choice is that it lures in water types. Bulky water types like Suicune, Starmie, and especially Melodic completely shut down Arcanine. Melodic destroys Arcanine, even if they're running Toxic. You can shrug off everything they do and refresh to cure the Toxic. But you know who punishes passive Melodic sets? Roselia. If the enemy has a Melodic, they will immediately switch it in against Arcanine most of the time. Then in comes your Roselia, and you've already started this game off with some advantage. You can get spikes on the field, and now your Arcanine is even scarier, because their best counter to your Arcanine gets absolutely farmed by Roselia. That's what makes this such an incredible core of two Pokemon. Some Arcanine switch-ins like Suicune or Starmie will have ice coverage, but more offensive Starmie variants are limited in their health and vulnerable to that extreme speed, and Suicune still gets very punished by Leech Seed. In this game against Fear, the Roselia helped out massively against two of Fear's Pokemon, Zapdos and Suicune. Suicune. Roselia got its first layer of spikes up very quickly against the Zapdos, establishing an early advantage. Ban Manaphy played carefully against the Suicune earlier on, going to Zapdos rather than Roselia in case of Ice Beam. But this Suicune ended up only having Surf as an attack, making Roselia an excellent check. After Leech Seeding, Roselia even managed to dodge an incoming Doug, getting out of harm's way and preserving its high health for later. With not many Pokemon left, Fear was really hinging on this Suicune win condition, but Roselia was making it impossible. Gengar and Arcanine managed to clean things up, and Fear revealed the final Pokemon, Kingdra. Arcanine landed a Toxic on it, and then in came Roselia. If it wasn't for this crucial Leech Seed, Fear actually could have won this. Only Swampert remained for Ban Manaphy, and it was poisoned and vulnerable to a rain-boosted Surf. Roselia took a huge Ice Beam, got that Leech Seed off, and lived one final hit to squeeze in an Aromatherapy and cure Swampert's poison. This Kingdra happened to have Rest of all things, a pretty rarely seen option, and that healed its Toxic, but left it vulnerable for two turns. Thanks to this Leech Seed, it was getting its health sapped, and with rain running out, Swampert was able to clean things up from here. In this battle, Roselia managed to wall both a Zapdos and a Suicune, two of Gen 3's strongest Pokemon, hold its own against a Kingdra in the endgame, landing not only Leech Seed, but an Aromatherapy. And that final Aromatherapy is what secured this victory. No other Pokemon choice on this team could have done all of these things. And this is one of my favorite high-level Gen 3 OU games ever for this reason. This perfectly showcases the amazing value you can get from a smartly chosen niche Pokemon, and how the Gen 3 OU metagame encourages creativity and outside-the-box thinking. The Kallus Invitational Tournament series has unfortunately ended, with the most recent Kallus Invitational 7 being the final installment. But I'd like to host an Invitational Tournament of my own in the future, with the help of the ADV Revival team. Whenever that happens, it'll be covered on the all-new Revival Tournaments channel, where we're posting regular commentary for SBL's Gen 3 OU games right now. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel for regular, high-level Gen 3 OU commentary and exciting future tournaments.